Hey there, and welcome back to Curse Seeds, an educational monster train series where we struggle through the toughest challenges around. So this was a peculiar submission to me. I actually received it from multiple people on Discord, where what I was told about this is that this challenge actually appeared on the main challenge screen of Monster Train for a day or so at some point recently. A bunch of people tried it, no one won, and then I got links from multiple folks who said, hey, this run was doomed, go try it for your series. So here we are. I know virtually nothing about it other than that it's got a fairly peculiar setup. We have a primordium start with primitive mold. And out of the gate, I would tell you that this has to be pretty strong because one, you have primordium and two, you have primitive mold, so you have melting. This looks like it should be great, but you know, it's easy to get misled by that a little bit because you could see, for instance, all Umbra units. And if you're seeing all Umbra units and they all just happen to be terrible, you have nothing good to feed Primordium into. There's also, there are no sweepers in this clan, so you don't have the obvious feed Primordium to sweeper win video game line, right? And it's a little interesting in that respect. So, so yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in seeing how this ultimately plays out. I think that, yeah, there's a lot that could happen here, and we'll, I just know virtually nothing about it, so we'll go in. Uh, it's also worth noting that this is the rare clan combo where Reform Primordium ends up being particularly good, so we'll see if that's even an option here. It usually is. You can usually force it pretty effectively, but... But regardless, I think that's all that needs to be said about that. If you are joining us for the first time, however, Welcome, but what we're doing here is I'm playing through user submitted challenges where they send me runs that they've been played or seen played that are at Covenant 25 with no mutators, very difficult runs that they just can't figure out how they would solve it. And they then create challenges and send them my way so I can record them, put them up on YouTube and over explain the hell out of them so you have some sense of how I would approach this run. So that's what we're doing here. We're back on a 1 and 0 oh win streak here. And oh my gosh, this recent run was also Umbra truly doomed. We saw a Cold Kalia who was our damage line. We had multiple perils of production, one two with holdover in order to enable us to win. We had Furnace Tap and then our hero, Crucible Collector, stood in front of all other things and saved the day by being our tank. It's very, very rare that I will give up and take one of Crucible Collector or Crucible Warden in the DLC. The units are not good. And the, the only way that they work, essentially, in my opinion, is when something stronger is doing more work behind them and you're just using them as a really bad tank. And I say really bad because, well, as a tank, it takes four space or something, right? It's two for the body, but you also have to feed it morsels so it doesn't die. So not only do you have to suffer through the morsel line problems in the DLC, you also need this space for the morsels in the first place. So it's, it's truly pretty doomed when you feel like you have to go that route. But... We did get there. It was ridiculously difficult and very narrow. I think that there were draw orders where we would have lost. But hey, we didn't see them, so rock on. So that's all I need to say about this. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's see how doomed this really is. All right, I hope you're all doing well today. I'm having a good one. It is middle of the weekend for me. I have another day off, always like it, otherwise just kind of chilling. Uh, as I understand it, magnets do still work and space is all right, so nothing really big to report there. For this run, we are Exile Umbra with Exile Melting, a very good clan combo in general. We have Double Barrel Daedalus with, this is Spell Shield Arcus and Chaste Seraph. We have Antumbra Assault, Molten Encasement, and Grovel. So we have multiple morsel choices here, which is very interesting to me. 
right? That's very interesting because it means I could actually go Umbra and not feel terrible. Let's vaguely look ahead what we have. We do have a Remnant Banner. Umbra Banners, Remnant Banners, another Remnant Banner down here on Ring 4. So you have a few options. Now these could all be duds, right? You could see everything terrible. And then this Remnant Banner could be, I don't know, Tycoon and Thug or something. It can be kind of tricky. But, but yeah. Let's go ahead and see what we roll into. See where everyone died first. Someone died on Ring 1. That's... That's pretty impressive to die on ring one. Ooh, buddy. Ring two death. We have a ring two ring four deaths and a ring six death. No one made it any further than that. So this could be because the run is truly cursed or it might just be because the line is very difficult to understand and maybe hard to pilot. So we'll see. We will see. Usually I feel pretty confident with Primordium, but I have had some pretty tricky runs with him before, so. All right, let's hit the Horde first. Melting Spout. You know, it's interesting because Melting Spout is actually fairly okay here, right? Immediate Burnout 1 to these Molten Encasements. Alternatively, I can just take Rationing Scales if I'm at all scared of the early game. I can be pretty aggro with that. The main downside to rationing scales is in the late game, where you're capped out on how much HP you can enter Seraph and, Dilig and uh, Divinity rather with, because you only get 50. So if you're really strong, you don't actually get the full 140 that you would love to walk in with. Melting Spout is actually not terrible in a ridiculous twist of fate, because I don't have anything in these encasements, so I can just not buy Burnout 1s, and I guess they tank pretty okay. The challenge is I need to make sure I'm not accidentally feeding Primordium into the Molten encasement. I'm going to take this because I could see myself going Endless Tomb, right? It'll be alright. Okay, what do we get? Stalwart Snack, Aggressive Edible. Now, Aggressive Edible is strong. They're also both pretty good for reforms, if I do go that route. Technically, you get more value with Stalwart Snack. The big problem is Stalwart Snack is slow, right? A very fast line would be take Aggressive Edible all the way, let him die, reform him, and then you start feeding him slowly over time, and those stats add up real quickly. I'm just going to click Aggressive Edible. It is better for this. We may get to a point where I pivot off of it later, but for now, it's good. Yeah. Now, what am I looking at? I have two pings. I have plinks. Big beefy things. Up from Primordium. I should be able to take this relic, right? Yeah, I think so. We'll see what we get. Wing clippings, conscription notice, or sinner salve. Sinner salve is almost always good this early because you see chains. You see... Potentially Absolvers on Ring 4. It's not bad. Conscription Notice does make the early game absolutely free, though. I'm going to click that. This means I don't even need a banner unit if they're all terrible. I could just feed Primordium into whatever the hell pops out of this. So, yeah, cool. All right, let's move. I don't think we can lose Ring 1 with that. I'll take this unit draft, of course. I'm not scared of it. We'll probably get a crossbowman or something. Yeah, it looks like we will. So this is the perfect example. Kill the backline, please. Thank you. We don't play with Primordium up top. I get him killed. Siren of the Sea, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, cool. So now we just feed Primordium here. He dies immediately. I need to work on the healer. Let's see, that's a lot of damage coming in, huh? Send this dude. I know it's kind of bad to put more things in the reform pool here, but... Yeah, but... Just hit, right? 
Let's see. There's a world I can get something in here, right? If I double plank. Yeah, so this is actually just fine, right? I do this. This siren is going to kill the front line, and then the train steward just slaps the back. So actually, the right choice is to simply not play more units. I could put this in the pool, actually, and get 14 in. I would rather just incant up here. Sure. Seems good. We should be unbelievably strong. Yeah, we totally get through that. And at this point, I'm just going to... Interesting. I am just going to take the damage shield here and let this go. We already outpaced this combat very comfortably. So, cool. Great news. All right. Now, I may as well take the reform if I can. Play this lad. He does some damage. Burns out. It's okay. Take the morsel here. Yeah, that's a good hit. Good job. Go team. Alright, this should be pretty straightforward at this point. No problem. Just hit Primordium again. Become very powerful. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're something like a 100 damage unit on Ring 1, so we're pretty good there. Huh. Let's see. What do I have? Perils of Production is pretty good here. One of the things I've learned about this game is that if you have a line that has Umbra and you're not really sure where your scaling is going to come from, it's typically pretty good to take perils when you're shown it. Because especially here, I don't need another ping. I have two Antumbra assaults. I don't need this packed morsels. It's not bad, but I have decent morsel generation to begin with between Grovel and Antumbra assaults, at least for the early game. So I'm going to click Perils here. Now, should I... Merchant of Magics, where are you at? Ring 4, there's a Remnant banner here. The interesting thing is that if I fish for Holdover early, then... This was a unit trial, right? It sure was. So I see a unit after this. So here's the deal. I'm going to click Perils. Let's see what our unit is before I make this decision. Molded is very good. I could take the other tomb. I already have stealth, so I'm fine with that. I'll take molded because it's a really good reform. Targeted, especially. Okay. Shadow Eater. Or all more all umber units. Wow. Okay. Not particularly enticing, huh? Nope. Interestingly, I think Shadow Eater is the best unit here by a fair margin. It's functional. It doesn't have any great lines here, but you could do some fun stuff. I could theoretically put Paraffin Enforcer into it, and it is probably better than skipping. The, the reason I'm looking at this, by the way, is because I'm thinking about skipping the Remnant Banners in favor of Merchants of Magic and debating how effective that would be. I'm going to take Shadow Eater, I think, and we're going to chill on him. I'm going to go to this banner on the right. This Umbra banner. No, I can't reroll, though. Maybe. There's a world I could if it's cheap enough. Let's see what we hit. All right, we just hit Holdover. I am a genius. Holdover Perils on this is great news. Wow, what a roll. Okay. Okay. No spell chain. There is an intrinsic, which is interesting. Huh. Maybe they'll show me a superfood at some point. We see an allied construct. So our run actually looks way more normal than I was expecting. Well, normal. I can feed alloy construct a ton of rage from perils and a reformed Primordium, and we should be okay. It's actually super fine if Primordium dies on top floor too, right? So we'll take Alloy Construct here. That is good. Yeah, that is good. Good choice. We buy this holdover on Perils. I'm probably not going to take... I'm going to minus one this Grovel, actually. Yeah, I want that to be more playable. And then we don't do anything else here. We can't afford it anyway. Plus 30 into a 
And Tumber Assault, no. Intrinsic here. I'm actually going to hold off on this because it's pretty likely I remove a bunch of planks, I remove a bunch of random units, and I hunt pretty hard for removals. I'm going to the steel shop on ring two. Well, hopefully this is money trial. Well, there's divine boons in the middle. It's fine, right? It's fine. I can go to the merchant of steel. Yeah, okay. We're going to chill. I don't want to go too hard on actars right now because I may need this 10 for the steel shop. And I'm probably going... I don't, do I need this merchant of magic anymore? Not really. It's interesting because Shadow Eater is still just a fine unit, but we have very expensive units now, which is a bit concerning. But, okay. Yeah, I would like the... Oh, another unit draft. They could show me another alloy construct, which would be an infusion right away. Well, in a ring four. Because I'm thinking right now, Hellvent ring four, self-infuse alloy construct. Always the solid choice. We should be able to move through this, right? Especially with the holdover on that thing. Yeah, this is this is the curse, right? You see both of them on turn one. <sighs> That's tough. Now here's the question. I could just drop Primordium here. The spikes is perfect, actually, because... Well, he kills himself no matter what, and then never feeds Shadow Eater, huh? Because of the order of operations here. So I think we sack Primordium no matter what, and then I have to decide on what am I doing. We get a Branded Warrior? That's actually pretty good, right? I'm concerned with the Armor 10 about feeding Alloyed Constructs, so I'm thinking Shadow Eater may just be better. I could feed Branded Warrior, though, which is mildly entertaining. Huh. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking Shadow Eater middle, Branded top. I don't think I can rely on Alloyed Construct right now. I have bad Morsel generation. I don't have the ability to ping these out. So Shadow Eater is almost certainly better. Anything that he can eat will just blow up the floor. And then Branded will do something here. He has, what, 28 damage right now? It's pretty solid, right? Almost kills this front line outright. I don't want to put it into the pool, though, right? It's definitely a little awkward. Alloy Construct is okay when I can actually reform Primordium because he is a morsel. Here's my plan. I think it's going to be Alloy Construct with the Branded Warrior in back. And we have just enough space for Primordium. Another reason for it is because one morsel on Shadow Eater is not enough here. Yeah, cool. So this is nice because we get one morsel immediately. Very good. So he swings next turn now, which is good. Ah, if I had been smart, I would have put the Primordium in the back, so Branded Warrior would have gotten the kill. Yeah, that's a, that's a bummer. True. Okay, this is now a good turn. I think the line here is... We take the damage shield here, and I feed him twice. And I put these in the back so they don't kill themselves. That's pretty good. I have two primitive molds and a molded coming up, but we don't play that there. We already deal with top floor? Yeah, totally. Okay, so I'm going to now do something here. It doesn't really matter what I do. We're fine on that. Okay, two gorges is important. All right, cool. We make the Primordium come back. Put him in front. So he takes these hits. I don't care if he dies. Cool. Okay. We should be fine here, I think. Yeah, that's good stats, huh? 
It's a shame to see the molded here, but I'm not super worried about it, I don't think. Yeah, I don't want to clutter the pool at all. We should be okay. We have two fuel and we do 100 by two damage. Yeah, fun. And now I can actually reform Primordium again. We tank with him and we're just cool with that. He gets an eat and then he punches. Cool. All right, so navigated. No damage with trial. Good. Another perils. I am foreseeing a morsel line, so I'm just going to now take packed morsels. Fine. Ooh. Bring to crushing demise. Very good. There's an interesting consideration for superfood on this run, and I need to be careful about it, because if you feed a neat trick that will kill you if you don't think about it, if Primordium has one burnout, he feeds one burnout to the front unit, and then immediately the burnout triggers on the floor, which makes your front unit burn out immediately. So you, one burnout Primordium will kill a non-burnout unit if you have superfood. And so that's my main concern about that, even though I do theoretically have a decent superfood line here, right? If I go superfood, I cannot reform Primordium is the important distinction. Or else I have to at least get him killed enough times first so that he's feeding multiple turns of burnout. You could fix that with this purifying cleanse is why I'm mostly bringing it up. But I think it's just crushing demise. This card is too good to skip. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Now that. We've seen six Umbra units from two unit drafts. I have seen eight Umbra units in this run so far. All right. I can understand why people struggled with this one. You've got Crucible Warden, both Morsel Maker, Morsel Master. Tough. Now, fortunately, I saw that Alloy Construct, who is the best line here by a long shot. And Shadow Eater is just fine. So I'm not going to click any of these terrible units. Yeah, you could reasonably put Morsel Master into Shadow Eater, right? And then on the bottom floor, you give him one Morsel and he blasts 20. It's not terrible. It is not terrible, but is it worth 25 shards? Good. I don't think so. Don't really think so. Morsel Master's infusion in general doesn't feel particularly strong to me unless I have the Overgorger right and I desperately need it. I usually just keep Morsel Master on a run and then just remove him when I no longer require the morsels. And if I do need the morsels on Divinity, well, I just give him two plus 25s and stick him in the back on the floor. And why, why spend 25 shards on this ability? I don't think it's good. So maybe you desperately need the space or you just have no better infusions, but we're skipping them here. So yeah, the big problem with the, is this a divine artifact? Yeah, cool. The big problem with it is, of course, that you have the struggle of how do you deal with multiple banner units if you leave them in. If you infuse them away, you at least draw a little more consistently, which is fair. We're shown, I'm hovering a little here because we're shown Divine Advanced Prototype, which is unbelievably strong. I basically just feed a Train Steward instead of Alloy Construct for this next combat, and we outright win. Is that worth 25 to me? I think we're strong no matter what, right? And this 25 gold may make the difference on this Merchant of Steel. I think we're fine. I haven't taken any damage. I have Primordium. We're okay. All right, we'll go left here because I need the Merchant of Steel since I'm not seeing one until ring five otherwise. Sure, what you got for me, buds? Endless on my tomb? Huh. That is, that is a survivability line. True. Burnout One Endless Tomb is really good. It's chased, so I would probably want to self-infuse him. How expensive was this? 95. So that's going to take me to 55. If I then take the money in middle, that's... 155. Yeah. 155 is a very rare chance of being able to re-roll this. Now, the other important thing to note here is that 
both of the uh, two out of the three other upgrades in this shop are good on alloyed construct. Multi strike and quick are both excellent here. Quick obviously means I don't need the encasement at all. It's interesting. That's actually really interesting to me. This is a unique case where I feel like I should look at the cavern first because this cavern could show me money and then that means I don't need to take the boons. Alternatively, there's nothing there's nothing I could upgrade here that would get me to, you know, take an X5 on an alloy construct or something. I would just, I don't know, X1 perils of production at this point, probably. We'll look at the caverns first. This is a unique case for this. Huh, strength stone? I mean, that's not good, right? I don't want that. Put it in Shadow Eater or something. I think I will just take... Is it a Bone Rattler? Am I ever going to throw things to my pyre? Probably not. No, it's Bone Shine here. I'll just take it. It's worth probably 15 health. Which is just fine. There's a theoretical world where I see it when I already haven't when I haven't played Perils yet, and then I get Perils on that turn and get six, oh boy, 30 health. It's fine. I think I'll take it. I almost never skip Bone Shine because it goes away, right? Which is nice. So, and I don't think this is a Strength Stone time. I have nothing fully upgraded. Okay, so we'll take Bone Shine. No big deal. Okay, so that did not change anything. Whatever. Do I want Endless Stealth? Maybe. It protects Primordium. Do I care about Primordium dying? Debatable. And then once Primordium dies enough times, he actually gives a lot of life on Reform. It's kind of interesting. I think I skip this Endless and I re-roll this shot and see what I get. Quick is part of it, yeah. I'll take the Quick and the Alloy Construct here. That's very good. And now I really don't need it. I'm looking for multi-strike at this point. I could throw a plus 25 at Shadow Eater, which is good if I'm keeping him on this run. Am I? Probably. There's no reason not to, other than the incredibly bad luck of drawing him on turn one with the construct, but meh. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's think briefly ahead for a moment. I'm looking I'm looking ahead. So I'm looking for another multi-strike on our lad. I think is all that really matters. I can feed Primordium to him and let Primordium die a bunch. So removals are good. Get rid of these train stewards. Shadow Eater, I actually don't think I invest anything into him right now. I'll save my 25 gold. I'm going to go to the magic shop next. Take the removals. The dupe is... Oh, no, do I have to take that dupe for the self-infuse? I think I do. Okay, so we'll see if we see an alloy construct from Daedalus. If so, then I go right and I do the dupe self-infuse self right there. We then go right and take the steel removal here with the horde. And then... Interesting. Another steel shop here. Or I could take a... Huh. Huh. Helvent dupe there as well. The interesting thing is that I don't think we can really wait on the self-infuse. If we get it on ring four, we feel much stronger into rings four and five and six. Obviously, I could do it on ring six, so it's not a big deal, but I'd like to be able to take these trials and not leak, you know, a ton of enemies. So I think that'll be fine. We're not going to do this investment. I will not remove a card just in case I see the alloy construct here, so I can then remove it this Urchin of Magic. I probably should, actually. What could they show me that I want? I already hit the holdover. A minus one into Gromful and Crushing Demise is probably the best use of my time. Yeah, actually, I will remove here. Just kick a Train Steward. Sure. Because I'm pretty unlikely to see one next floor, so... Okay, great. Let's go on. Yeah. I think we should be able to navigate this without too much issue. This is the last floor that I am forced to have Primordium on the Alloy Construct with only one fuel per beat. This is interesting. I think I send Primordium on middle here. 
What did I get? A Baron? All right, all right, hold up. So I now do, I mean a Tycoon, sorry, I get them mixed up. I do Tycoon, Shadow Eater, Plink. This guy's giving me so much cash. What a good one. And I chill on this Rubble Morsel. I don't want it to enter the pool when we hold off on Boneshine. It's gonna be worth so much cash. Oh, that's so good. We reform Primordium. Yeah, this is gonna be strong, huh? Primordium comes down. We get the Alloy Construct, and that is just gonna be my turn. Yeah, sadly, no more money, but I don't have a choice. I had to get Primordium back here. Cool. Reform Primordium, of course. I'm going to... Ooh. He clobbers top floor, right? He sure does. Yeah, he's, he's actually pretty good. We put him in back. The answer here is we do 40-40. We kill the first two. Primordium then swings and kills the last dude. I would like to do Antumbra Assault here. Yeah, sadly, I cannot eat any of them. I could theoretically have saved the Ember Drain, right? Yeah, by by doing that first and then playing the Morsel. That is a mistake, then. This saves, what, two if I put the Jeweler in front? I'm just going to give him the damage, then. And we do not play this Morsel. I don't want it. What's coming up, actually? Three Molds? I can actually put this in the pool, and it gives me five gold. Cool. I'm fine with that. Sure, give me money, Tycoon. Thank you very much. Huh. Ooh, I want Plink bottom. I was gonna Plink top, but nah, I want money. Excellent. I can now reform the morsel that I left in, right? I can feed this morsel up top because it's good now. Yeah. Good. We clear the floor. I give our lad a rubble morsel. He clears everything. We get more money. Cool. I technically could have gotten more money by getting the rubble morsel killed. But I didn't because I want Primordium to be reformed next turn if I only draw one. So, and we do not play Yon Rubble Morsel here. Fine. Cool. Okay. All right, we see Perils at long last. I'm going to pack Morsels here. We see a Lifesteal Morsel. Ah, but we're fine. We're fine, of course, because the quick means I don't have to worry about this at all. Hit the mid person. Hit the mid person. Hell yeah, money. Grovel comes in. Yeah, all right, cool. Minor attack damage. I can tank this hit here. Sure, cool. And we chill on these morsels. We're generating really good morsels right now, which is great news. I could have gotten another five gold there, right? Take this primitive mold here. Primordium enters the fray. Now the question is, I could just save, get another five gold here. Which is pretty great. Yeah, I like more money. Cool. So we get another 15 gold. This man has represented something. We walked in with, what, 40, I think? So he'll have been 50 gold just for existing. We super win the combat from this position. I just kill this thing now. Cool. Yeah, great news. Shadow Eater dies, up to 90. Good news. Perils, I don't really care about anything else. We just double plank him, fun. We are very powerful. We're going to see if I can reform Baron Tycoon? Nah, no Tycoon reform. Fair enough, get out of my train, bud. He gets killed in one round, cool. We're pretty strong out of ring three there. Ooh, Furnace Tap? with my holdover perils. That's excellent. Oh man, look at this. 
If I had gone the Endless Encasement, I would have the Devourer of Death Infusion on it now. I could still take it, but I think Quick with Furnace Tap is just better. Oof. Man, these unit drafts are bad. Morsel Master, Crucible Collector, and Lady of the Reformed. It is our first melting unit in three unit drafts. And it's not a good one for Primordium. I completely appreciate that this was challenging for a bunch of people. We skip the hell out of these. Take my 10 gold and leave. Now the real question is, I don't care about Ember. I have Perils of Production. It's not diligent, so I don't have to worry about having zero cost dumb stuff. So, fine. It's just space, pretty much. The real question is, do I need that space now? I was definitely leaving some morsels on the table. True. I think I can take draw first, though. I'm not going to give Alloy Construct a large stone ever. And him eating, he's going to get double fuel. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. I'm going to go draw here. All right, and we did not see another alloy construct. So we go to the right as planned. I'm gonna look at this remnant banner. That's tough. Lady of the Reformed Paraffin Thug. Okay, yeah, we skip those friends. Yikes. Man, these units are so bad. If you miss this alloy construct, you have to basically go all in on Shadow Eater, which is tough. Right? What did we skip? We skipped them. Before I do anything, I want to look here. We skipped a, a Remnant Banner here. You could have maybe seen something functional from this, but it also might have been a dud. And we skipped this Umbra Banner on the right here, which, who knows? I don't know, maybe this is Morsel Made, right? Any of these could have been a rare unit and the run looks a lot easier. But I get the feeling, if we had seen a good rare unit, we wouldn't have four deaths on this run, so... I don't know. We'll look at that later. Alloy Construct for sure. Self-infuse it right now. And we should be good. The quick means I don't have to worry too much about survivability. We don't want to worry about fuel when he's gauging, gaining two on a gorge. Ah, shame. Plus 30 is not it. I'm looking for a spell chain here. Would be nice. One, two, two opportunities more. Yeah, I don't have to take any of these actually. No, no value in that. Oh, superfood. This is the bait. Clicking superfood here and then reforming Primordium once kills Alloyed Constructs. So we're just going to go all in on aggressive edible here. I could... Man, oh wait a second. I could do... Intrinsic Furnace Tap Primordium. If I take superfood here. Huh. I could just pivot this to superfood and not let Primordium die. And then I'll have to go to exactly 100 shards so Primordium survives, what, two rounds on the Divinity? And all I have to do is draw Grovel once, right? Because I'm going to go, where is it? Superfood two. Ah, oh, he gets damage shield two, right? So he... Takes nine from sweep at 100 shards, which means he lives three rounds and gets fully eaten. This is really interesting to me because I have the furnace tap. Now, I'm immediately regretting not taking that intrinsic because this would be incredible value. I can't reform him if I take this. I have, what, two shots at this? What's better here? The reforming line where I just let Primordium die multiple times and feed him in? Or the superfood line and hold out for intrinsics or a bunch of removals? How many removals am I reasonably seeing here? Merchant of Steel, Vortex, good. I will most likely go Vortex, Hellvent, and dupe furnace tap outright because that's good it's just a free multi-strike in this run yes 
That's removals. It's four removals, technically three because of the Hellbent. Another Hellvent Vortex on ring six. I, th I theoretically am seeing three removal sets back to back between ring seven, six, and five with virtually no shops except for ring five. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And then I go Merchant of Magic finally on ring eight. Maybe. Uh, it's a little early to predict it. I Superfood's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't see a temp I don't see a magic shop before the first hell vent here. Interesting. Right, interesting. This is now that I'm seeing the superfood, I maybe regret not taking that intrinsic earlier, right? On the perils. I was holding out for spell chain. And I still might see it, right? It still might just be fine. Is the thing is is that I don't think I need to do superfood. The only thing that Superfood really does that I enjoy is that it gives me the ability. I could also theoretically just kill Primordium multiple times and let it use and then reform it and then let it have Burnout 3 or something. So it passes on Burnout 9 when it dies kind of deal. But then I'm a little beholden to do I have the on-demand reforms, right? Which is a bit concerning. I think we could reasonably win either way. The question is really, what is more consistent? And it's not an obvious answer. Superfood is very powerful. Superfood is an exceptionally powerful line. That means that Primordium is guaranteed to live on top floor divinity because you go Superfood 2. And hopefully by that point, you have the ability to draw all of your multi-strikes. Maybe you see an intrinsic on Furnace Tap and then you just go completely mad with power. Certainly an option. There's a lot of high rolls on that. And then you have, you know, 50 attack alloyed construct who wins because he does 2,500 damage a turn by hitting 50 times. Pretty fun. So I think that is a pretty consistent line from where we are. Technically, we're at 28 cards once I actually play Bone Shine, right? So as long as I can play it on a turn that's not a turn I have to play units, pretty much. So 28. I remove 6. I get dupes. I could theoretically skip them, but there's no reason to skip a dupe. I would probably dupe either Furnace Tap, Pack Morsels, or another Perils, just so I have a better chance of hitting early. I'm almost definitely removing Shadow Eater now that we've seen this nonsense. I think it is Superfood. And in the worst of case, I can just get Primordium killed like 3 times and then feed him up top, and it's okay. Right? We're hitting three times now. 35 by three on turn two. Yeah, okay, we'll take superfood here. I think this is good. Okay, that was a lot of discussion, a lot of challenge. Purge, not terrible, but I'm not gonna take it now. I wanna chill at 50 because I just turned off Reform Primordium, basically. Or maybe, we'll see. We'll see. Depends a lot on draw order here. Okay, think. Seal of Aggression. We can take this. As long as he has fuel, we're fine. Yes, okay, fair enough. Should I have taken the perspective? It's tough. Bone shine turn one every time, unfortunate. I'm curious, I'm thinking to myself, should I have taken the perspective intrinsic on that perils? And it's tough because spell chain, I think, is significantly better. But this is a case that goes back to, is it good to settle for what you're shown now? Or is it good to wait? And the thing is, is I, did, I obviously did not need that value at the time. Right? I just did not require that. Oh, hell, hell yeah. Get it, lady. I didn't need that. So because I didn't need that, 
it just does not matter to me at that point. There was no reason to, to spend that. That was 10 shards. It made it a little harder earlier if I was concerned about it. Whereas now, I have very powerful setup. I need to remove these units. Holy crap. Ah, oh, man, this lady is so good. She just punches out someone. Well, now that I'm... Now that I'm not reforming Primordium, I can actually just send these, right? Just get them killed. Sure. Although I'd like to reform her. Ah. I'll kill one. It's fine. Good job, lady. You are doing admirable work. Superfood at the end of the day. Just in time. Bottom floor is a bit concerning, right? Why couldn't this be the turn I draw that stupid thing, huh? I think I do blast bottom. We do, what, 150? I easily clear this next wave, so I'm going to send it on bottom here. You know what? It's fine. It's cool. There's no way any of these do anything. I'll leave the pool empty so I can reform her later. Yeah, fine. And we just have quick alloy construct doing work here now, yeah. Cool. Furnace tap. Yeah, he's doing a lot of damage now, huh? 50? Sure, punch a thing. Why not? Yeah, we, we should be in really good shape, actually. As long as I can have morsels. And this is another case of thank goodness for... Thank goodness for the self-infuse, huh? Also, thank goodness for quick. I'm glad I did that. That makes this very clean. Yeah, not a lot of nuance to this, unfortunately. Just kind of play cards. She does. This lady is great. Thank you, Conscription Notice, for existing. They don't leak anything. We're very powerful right now. Cool. Hey there, Shadow Eater. Bye. Eight fuel is great. You know what? I'm going to take this bone shine for 15 right here. Sounds good to me, brud. Let's do it. Okay, cool. We make it through this. We're up on HP. I'll take Fade's first blade. Ooh, man, this is good. I can now, if I let Primordium die multiple times, that's actually interesting. I'll take it because it opens up some interesting stuff. Cannibalize is fun. Just kill any of my own units. I may not have many. I probably should just take Grovel, actually. More cards that say guaranteed morsels are good. Yeah, fair enough. Another Crushing Demise. I don't think I need them. I'm going to skip this for here. Yeah. Our density of morsel cards is pretty good now. We go to the right. Hopefully we see a multi-strike. Yeah, that bone shine did nothing, huh? Whatever. It's fine. Large. I'm going to clear Shadow Eater here. They show me the Endless again, huh? Interesting. Yeah, get out of here, Shadow Eater. I need to draw my Alloy Construct turn one every time. And then I need to clear out units that get in the way. I'll take this Relic, of course. Hell's Banners solves Ember. Wing Steel is just a draw relic. Interesting. I think I like... I don't really need Ember to be solved. I have the Perils of Production. Yeah, think about this. Even if I get, oh boy, an extra through Ember or something, so what? Draw card is good. See my stuff faster, hopefully. It's interesting because it doesn't actually represent a lot of value, right? I'm playing, what, two Ember worth of stuff on turn one every time. I actually think Hell's Banners is probably better here. Because there are many turns where I will be able to derive value from it. I'm just going to click Wing Steel, actually. I, I went back and forth on that, but it's fine. This is the last Steel Shop I'm seeing potentially for the entire run. Am I okay with that? If I go dupe, dupe, magic shop, 
What does this run look like? I just put a plus 25 in Alloy Construct then. And we live like that. And I take the Endless into Burnout Encasement. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, the nice thing is the Endless Encasement is still a great line for keeping Alloy Construct alive into Relentless if I don't see Void Binding or a lot of Damage Shield, because Draw Order will matter a lot for how much Damage Shield Primordium is passing along. So yeah, we do a plus 25 here. We're just chilling with this. It's fine. Sure, bud. Why not? It does mean the Quick was a little bit lost, but at the same time, that Quick represented so much value on this previous combat, right? We took zero, whereas instead we might have died. We got the Relic out of it. Yeah, true. This is almost a bait, kind of. Ah, you know, maybe I should have considered that and that Hell's Banners a little more with the Endless Tomb, right? I don't need space, though, is the thing. All right, let's think for a moment here. I probably do have to take Ember, actually. No, I don't. Perils of production. My ember is useless. Right. Right. Think it through. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This winged steel is going to matter a lot if I actually put endless on, right? Because I'm going to have two cards taking up draw, perils, and the encasement. I'm going to do the endless. I think this is correct. It's burnout one endless automatically. Seems strong to me. And then I put the plus 25 in the construct. I'm fine settling for this. Yes. And I will remove another card. We get rid of Train Steward. I need to spend a lot of money removing on this run. I'm not going to see a shop for a while here. We move on. The next one's 120, or I actually would have bought it. With that plus 25, I could reasonably take Spikes 4 here. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. We should demolish this man. Ooh, this is a nice turn, right? I can do one, two. Remember, don't let Primordium have Ember Drain now, if you can humanly avoid it, because he gives two Ember Drain is the problem. Yeah, so we do Antumber Assault. Lifesteal Morsel. Primordium. What you got, Siren of the Sea? Cool, bud. Good chat. You're pretty decent. I also want to feed you this morsel so you don't... Yeah, fine. So we don't leave that morsel in. That's potentially scary. Hit one of the non-middle dudes. Excellent hit. Great job. Go team. May as well think about incants a little bit, huh? Kind of interesting. Let's see. Lifesteal is okay. It means that nothing. It means nothing. Damage shield also means nothing. I will leave these morsels in at this point. I think it's fine. I also could just get them killed, right? And then reform them later. Kind of like a bank for morsels at this point when I'm thinking about it that way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we see this peril's a little late. It's fine. It's actually just super fine, and I can ping this fellow in front here. It doesn't really matter, actually. I will just primitive mold one of these morsels back. <laughs> it's better. And we chill. We're very powerful. 150 here. 150. Actually, it's better to do this, right? Yeah. We leave this morsel in. This person in, rather. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that is better. Great job. That's scary. Alright, cool. We hit Furnace Tap, which is good. And I can start just playing the encasement here. Fun. Fun. Yeah, okay, we're alright. Cool. And this is what my turns look like.
Yeah, this is what my turns look like. I definitely want Ember, by the way. I'm at the stage where it's just good. Yeah, for sure. Single life steal is big value. I can reform. Yeah, reform this life steal morsel. Great news. Pinging in the back is, I guess, useful here. Alternatively, I could reform maybe another morsel. I'm just going to kill one of them, actually. Yeah, that's fine. We'll have enough stealth that I'm not worried about it either way, so. This is actually an interesting position, because if I see Spell Chain at this temple, I don't need Ember anymore. Right? We have, what, five stealth, and yeah, we're, we're Cruz, and what a good... Yeah, he does it in three. Cool. Never, enemy never swings. Waxer Snuffer. Alright, I mean, Endless Tomb feels pretty solid now. Okay. I think we're cooking. I don't need any more of these cards. I want to remove cards. Engulfed in Smoke is pretty good. It is pretty good, but I think I just don't take cards. I want to get down to Furnace Tap and Perils fast. The Tomb is enough. Man, if I had taken that Devourer of Death, huh? We're not going to this Steel Shop. We go to the right here. Show me something I want. Spell Chain it is. Spell Chain Perils. So this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier. I could have taken that Intrinsic when I saw it. And I have a good philosophy that has teach, it trains me pretty well. It, it teaches me and has taught me and done a good job of reinforcing itself that you should take power when you need the power. If I felt like on Ring 2 I was weak, an example might have been if I had been powering up Gold Kalia or something. I could reasonably see myself taking intrinsic perils there, so I could power her up to actually win, and then duping that multiple times. And then you just have immediate power on every combat. Whereas here, with Alloy Construct as my line, I don't feel so bad about this. This is excellent. What a good hit. Purge is also really good here, actually. I don't need a self-infuse anymore actually probably remove them yeah so I think we're in a really good position is what I have decided I'm gonna remove the other molten encasement I don't ever want to draw into it at this point it goes into the reform pools and is annoying I'd rather use the reform pool to stash morsels pretty much it's actually good to leave one in right because it can save primordium early Gives me double hits. So then I kill a Plink instead. Yeah, okay. So there is a world where Molten Encasement early is good. So I don't mind it that much. And there's not much else I'm really trying to hit with this reform at this point. So, okay. Yeah, we kill Plink now. Good. All right, good. Now, what do I do here? It could just be Furnace Tap. I think I need to watch my shards a little bit. It's easy to get carried away by duping that Perils of Production. Which, you know, would be excellent, of course, but I don't think I need that. Furnace Tap is just excellent, though. If I see an early Furnace Tap on Primordium, oh boy, we're good. We're good. We're currently on 7 draw with, what, 24 cards? Pretty solid. I took Fade's First Blade, by the way, because I was thinking there might be a world where I let Primordium die multiple times on the Divinity and do a Burnout strategy. But with the Spell Chain hit, I think we're just strong enough. Removals are at, what, 120 gold right now, I think? No, I think it's 150. Or it's the one after 120. Is it 150 or 180? I can never remember. Okay, so the dupe should go into cards I need to hit fast. Furnace Tap is promising. I could reasonably dupe the Perils and have two hits in my deck, which makes it very good. But I'm just going to remove a lot of cards. So I think it's actually just straight up this Furnace Tap. Because once I ha I can save this and it's no problem. Yeah, sure. This is good. Two Furnace Taps. Great news. I think we can cruise from this point. We have enough hits on the floor. It's going to hit five times with big numbers. Thanks to Rage. 
Chase will do some work against us, but Waxer Snuffer keeps the stealth high. We chill at 80 here. This purge is pretty tasty, actually. What else am I duping on this run? I'm actually going to take this purge. My whole run is basically I want to get down to virtually no cards. So going to 90 here is fine. Get rid of a uh, plank, because planks are dead to me. Yeah, cool. At this point, is there another temple? There is. If they show me another purge minus one, I will actually just use it. A removal is one of the most powerful things that I could see in this deck. Oh, do I slam it? I couldn't anyway, because... Yeah. Also... That is a terrifying dark shard, huh? Okay, so it's... Three days, right? I'm probably gonna leak these dudes then. Yeah, I play Construct, and then I play Primordium. I could let Primordium just die here and reform him a bunch. Yeah, actually, because I don't want three days. Because you, you always play Construct first, so you don't give a second days to Primordium with Superfood. Okay, now the real problem is if I play Primordium here, he gets days, and then he passes on the days. So it essentially amounts to two days on the dude, right? Yeah, so he's... No, because he gets another days from me playing this rally on everyone. Okay, so we, we let Primordium die here. Nameless Siren? Sure, both Furnace Taps this early is kind of tragic, but it's okay. It's all right. Incant Shard. Man, this is a toughie, huh? I want to reform Primordium. Yes. I play Primordium bottom. I need to let Primordium die. And I have to take the Incant on middle because I need morsels. It's just gonna have to be okay. I need to make sure he can swing into this floor. Also, the Siren actually does something, cool. So now that I've done this nonsense with Primordium, he has to die a bunch. We're in a very awkward location where he has to die an absolute truck ton. Reform, this is two is not enough. I could put it here. Oh, the plank on top is actually pretty good, huh? Yeah. It's a free morsel. Cool. I will take a grovel up top, 100%. And we just take three morsels here. It's good. I need to get him statted up to actually kill something. This is a really nasty clip reflector, huh? We're not going to be able to kill him. I'm going to leak on this turn. Almost certainly. I could play this Primordium in middle. It does something. It puts him at 111. It's not bad, right? Kill this back fellow here. Take the attack morsel here for another 6. Puts him at 105. He's going to be at... 32 by 3. He's going to be close to killing this Clip Reflector, huh? And I'm going to leave... Yeah. That Morsel in. It's fine. Ugh. The Incant Shard Mark 2. Wow. Arcus is farming me here, yo. That is rough. Now, I still can get this kill, right? We come really close. So here's what we do. We can get the kill because I can do one perils here and then I spend the purge copy up here. And to work around that, I just burn cards so that they don't get boosted here. And then we go up here and we put the Rage here and he actually kills him. Yeah, cool. So we, we only take 9 instead of 16. Fair. Man. 
it's fair. It's fine. We haven't been able to use Primordium yet, which is the real problem here. This rage is well worth it. I want to reform Primordium. Now, the real question is... Okay, Furnace Tap in play. Is this enough? Burnout 3 means he passes on 9 turns. He's really strong here. And I could give him the Furnace Tap and we have a million attacks. So, it's possible. That means, do I kill Arcus in 9 turns? Let me think about that for a second. One turn here, one turn here, one turn here. Three ways. He rises. I then get three rounds of Relentless Combat before Alloy Construct dies. Do I need to do that? I don't think so. I think I just play the Furnace Tap directly on our lad here. And then toss him this damage shield. Give him some morsels here. And we. I think we win on 200 damage. And I just sack Primordium somewhere else. I may still give him Primordium eventually, but I think this is just going to be correct. I'll swing it. Ah, shame. It's fine. With that Furnace Tap, we should be able to get through. Yeah, we'll, we'll get through on this. We're powerful enough here, for sure. And the Damage Shield sort of locks it in as well. I'll take this Damage Shield and I will start playing Stealth up top. I will reform the Siren so I'm not looking at her. I don't care about Primordium dying. Sure, fine. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be fine. We managed to punch through this whole floor here, which is pretty excellent. I can reform Primordium. Now, at this point, I probably could just play him on the floor, right? But the problem is I have a Rally Shard because... Arcus hates me, so I can't play the Encasement or Primordia. <laughs> uh, thanks, Arcus. You're a bro. I'll keep playing the Encasement, at least. It's fine. And we just don't play Primordium. He's no longer important. The fact that I can win this combat without playing Primordium on my dude at all is a testament to how strong I feel my line is right now. Yeah, it's it's pretty good, in case that was unclear to you. I think we get there no matter what. We're doing almost 500 damage a turn. I have tons of morsels. And I have something like a ton of stealth. Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Fun. We're very powerful. I can actually play it in front, but it doesn't matter. And he gets punched. Okay, no problem. Cool, alright, we get there. Easy. It's four rounds. Five, yeah. It's actually not that strong, but we also didn't even have Primordium contributing, so... They show me the Devourer of Death, which is, oh my gosh, so strong. With the Waxer Snuffer... This thing just... I have to take it. It's too powerful to skip. Yeah. It's just way too powerful. 30 AoE damage to the floor now clears back lines for me. So Alloyed Construct is going to only have to punch. Yeah, wow. He only has to punch... Huh. The front heavies. The other thing is, I keep talking about Ember. Ember's only good early. With, once I hit this Perils of Production, it no longer matters. So I'm just going to take draw. Double draw here. I don't. We were evidenced by that combat. I don't feel like I need stealth. Or I don't feel like I need much. Right? I am in the situation where I'm not necessarily answering how do I play Top Floor Divinity very well. I maybe should have more strongly considered the Engulfed in Smoke to protect Morsels. As it stands, I really have no answer to that. It's pretty much the only question. And if that's the question, I need to be thinking then about middle floor divinity. I already have seven draw. I am removing more cards here. That is a true statement. I'm going to take space. I think I already have enough draw here. More is really good. Eight card draw, see my whole deck in three turns is 
pretty incredible. But I want to leave Midfloor Divinity open here because I haven't answered feeding my man. And if only thing he's eating is Primordium, that's not enough fuel to win. Not even close. Yeah, so we'll take space here. I think this is just correct. Cool, we go to the dupe again. You may ask why. One, removals are strong. I want to clear out more planks. Two, just dupe furnace tap again at this point. Or even I might consider perils of production. We'll see what's in this temple actually, but we'll go to the right for sure. I want these removals. Yeah, and I don't see myself needing anything over there, so. Port first. Mark of an Exile. Oh, that's great. Primordium walks up with 15. Although, Worn Grindstone is also pretty fun. It is just an extra 5 out of the gate. And some numbers on Primordium here. Pretty good. What's worth more to me? 5 attack on Primordium and then base 5 attack on Construct or 5 HP on Primordium? He doesn't get any more from the second rank of superfood, right? No, I thought it was just 10 all the way through. Yeah, okay. So we'll take Grindstone, actually. Mark of an Exile sounds excellent, and it is. It obviously scales really well if I do the reform, but as was evidenced by that last combat, ignoring the fact that Arcus farmed me, it takes a long time to get there, and it makes the earlier rings, the earlier rounds, rather, very risky. So I'm just going to take Worn Grindstone, make him stronger out the gate. That is very good here. Cool. We're going to do Superfood 2, of course. We're just fine with this. I want the damage shield 2 out of the gate for sure. What's in this temple? A minus 2. And a purge. I'll take this purge. Purge of Plink is excellent here. Am I really going to go higher on shards? I'm already at 100. This might be a really good run to go higher, actually, because I can put this minus 2 to good use, right? In Grovel or Furnace Tap. And then I dupe the zero cost Furnace Tap. The, the, the energy cost on Furnace Tap doesn't matter. Who am I kidding? The, the thing is, is this Furnace Tap is just getting played as soon as I have Perils. So I actually think the right answer is to do perils here, not furnace tap. Have two hits in the deck for it. Yeah, I'm going way high on shards, aren't I? Because I want the Devourer of Death infused in here too, right now. This thing is unbelievable. And that's 125. And I'm duping the perils of production, which is 135. And I'm removing the non-purge planks. 22 cards with 7 draw is really good. Huh. I'm in an interesting situation here where I could go 150? Actually, like, super unironically. What is this, chaste? He just gets, what, Purify at 130? Yeah, he doesn't have anything too terrifying. He gets a lot of life steal. I don't really care. I'm going to have stealth. His upgraded units should not matter if I hit one of these perils fast enough. Yeah, we'll be at 22 cards. I'm super duping perils, by the way. This is a fun one because that last... That last... Cursed. I had to think about what I was trying to say for a second. That last Cursed, where I actually just applied a holdover to a second perils taught me that that's an interesting line that I haven't been forced down before but if you're worried about your scaling you can just dupe the big perils of production it's like hitting an extra what ritual of battle every combat but a little every turn but a little better this is super worth it and then I can go to I can just go to 150 right now and chill 150 is really disrespectful in the ring 7, but I'm so strong now, I just don't care. My deck is very thin. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think this is fine. Make some stuff free. The nice thing about this Grovel being free is I can play it on turn 1 if I happen to not have perils, but have to play Alloy Construct, so... It's better than the Furnace Tap. In the, in the world where I have perils, I just slam these furnace taps. It doesn't matter what they cost. In the world where I don't, I'll never play them because I want to be able to play my other cards in the interim. 
Yeah, 150 shards on ring seven. That is not a thing you see me do, but I think we've navigated this combat in this run. Oh man, purifiers are tough. If I see the devourer early, we should be able to destroy because they kill upgraded purifiers. I don't really care about this. He will have enough HP and damage shield. Yeah, fine. This feels really powerful. Yeah, that's a... Oh, buddy. Right. Again, as always, never play Primordium first or he passes on the Ember Drain. Now we do this. Titan Sentry. Get him, bud. Huh. <laughs> Immediately thinking about Crushing Demise now. Now that I've drawn it. It is really good. Oh, that's so worth it. Yeah, fine. I just killed a 290. Great job. Go team. All right. Yeah, we, we super win. Check this. We finally get to see all of this stuff early enough. I pass on multi-strike. We have now won. Fun. I no longer need anything. Yeah, we get it. We're so powerful here. Fun. Another furnace tap. Doesn't matter where it goes right now. Turns out, I do so enjoy my 79 by 6 alloy construct. Oof. That's a scary looking set of floors, huh? We'll work on middle a little, I suppose. And we get through it, man. We do get through it. Clear out the plank. I want to reform the shark. This shark represents solid value. Put him on bottom because he, he comes close here. I play the devourer middle. I don't need the stealth right now and it kills the purifier and I'll just take the morsels here. Cool. We're going to eat through almost all of our damage shield very quickly. But it's going to be fine, I think. We do a lot of damage, actually, which is pretty hype. Oh, wow, I get more morsels. Hell yeah. Those are good morsels. You'd love to see it. I put Devourer of Death on bottom. He kills that unit. Good news. Cool. We're powerful. We're very, we're very strong at this stage. Oh, boy. Damage shield, good. Life morsels, excellent. Perils, good. I would love a shroud spike. I have so much ember. I just crushing demise something here. We start taking the, sh the stealth up top. What is in here? Shark? I don't need you, bud. Thanks for your service. You did nothing on this combat, but you did look cool, so I'll give you that. All right, yeah, great. I am very confident in our line. Like, so very confident. Yeah, that's good. I'm actually going to kill my morsel here for two others. Cool. And I'll leave them in for next turn. We're powerful. I'm pretty sure we destroy this boss very quickly. I don't necessarily know if I need to be playing all these cards at this stage, but... I'm super cool with it. Fortunately, I don't have to think too terribly hard about any of it. I think you're dead, right? Yeah, yeah, you're super dead. Good job. Go team. That's good. That's If that's what all my other combats coming up look like, we win. For sure. Gem Trove is overkill. I don't need more Morsel cards. We have plenty. I need to just thin out even further. None of these cards matter. Memories of the Melted is fun, but I don't care take money great we the fact that we demolished that combat at 150 gives me a lot of hope for this run do i really need anything from the magic shop remove consume on a furnace tap would be pretty broken i agree i could double stack it too so there's like two hits on this magic shop that just go out of control i'm already at 150 what would i do i mean i would just dupe 
Furnace tap, right? So at this point, it doesn't matter. I could just double stack it instead. Fine. Take the removals. Those are big value. And we just kick and Tumbra Assault and... Yeah, we just kick and Tumbra Assault and a Primitive Mold here. I'll leave one of those in. Maybe I get the plus 20 and consume or something. Lightstone casing. What could I, I mean, hey, there's no, sadly there's no opportunity for intrinsic here or I might consider it, but yeah, double stack, furnace tap, that seems good. Sure. Put a minus one into crushing demise. It's a card I want to play every time I see it. The next one probably goes in this other grovel. I want to leave the slot on this furnace tap open in case they give me a remove consume for my double stack fellow. I will take the Entumbra Salt to 13. It actually does something at 13. What you got for me? Holdover? Sad. Yeah, it's a shame. All right, well, it is okay. We'll look at Relics now. What you got for me? I already looked at these. Not very impressive. Not a big fan. Don't need the Lightstone casing for anything. Carols of Production is fine. We skip this. Reroll. What you got for me? Chain of Gems. That's a survivability plan, huh? Yeah, that's pretty good, as I would say. It also protects morsels on the divinity, so I can go back to top floor divinity. Yep, because he doesn't need to eat much, he just needs to eat enough that he can hit. So, yeah, chain of gems, get in here, bud. Cool. All right, we should be super cruising. Am I even going to take holdover at this point? Holdover crushing demise is excellent, but I don't know if I need it for anything. I'm really sad about that remove consume not being here, but hey, hitting one of them... Pretty solid. Take a minus one in a grovel. I'm going to buy two removals into primitive molds here. My general opinion of a run, by the way, is if you get down to under 20 cards and you feel really strong that way, you're probably winning. You are probably winning the game. I have seven draw between wing steel and my Herzl's compound at 150 shards with 18 cards in my deck. We're good. I'll put them up to 23. Yeah, bud. Get a man Tumber Assault. It's good to have a ping. You should never remove all of them, even in runs like this. There's plenty of turns where you'd be like, oh no, I can't deal with this Wilt Wings or something, and you just blast it. So you should always have some card like this in your deck, in my opinion. But one is enough when you have a deck this small. Yeah, this is great. This money does nothing. I don't want this holdover on anything. Really, my deck is so small, it's basically holdover anyway. Yeah, every card has basically have holdover at this point. Because my deck is... How many cards on redraw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 cards. I see everything in two turns. Yeah, we're good. We're good. I'll chill at 150. Yeah, fun. All right, let's go, Seraph as I momentarily look over at OBS to make sure I have been recording and am not muted. Go team. We have done it. Yeah, Chaste is scarier than Divinity, but also just free. We're 150 out of 100. Show me blank pages, you coward. I'll feed Primordium to something else. Yeah, so the reason why you should be scared, in my opinion, of going high on shards is when you're scared of Seraph, because Seraph is a beast at this level. Also, I can now play Primordium first because Chain of Gems and I have the turn one perils, so I don't care about the Ember Drain anymore. I'm gonna use Icy Silophyte to bait in middle. That's actually excellent. We have a great Primordium start. He has a ton of this. Again, I'm gonna lose a lot of value, but it is just gonna be fine. I wanna work on defensive stats, I think. Sure, get it, bud. Hopefully it'll go mid. Yeah, great. You have done your job. Worthy of glory. Also, seeing this double stack furnace tap here is busted. Truly busted. Wow. That's a problem, huh? I could save her? Yeah. 
That was scary, but good. We hold on to the pack morsels here. Thank you, Icy Cellophite. Wow. Wow, really cool, actually. Yeah, fun. We're always going to drain something on top. It's okay. Not worried about it one bit. Crushing Demise something on bottom, sure. I will always stay ahead here. I actually think I should probably keep Cellophyte alive at this stage of the combat. Give her stealth as needed. She's actually doing great, wow. This is a, a very surprising conscription notice hit. This is one of those things about conscription notice that I really love. It, unlike advanced prototype, where advanced prototype is really good, right? But advanced prototype, you still want to remove your train stewards at some point in the run. It's just a fact. You still want to get rid of those at some point. And you're always worried about that a little bit. But in the case of the conscription notice, you can still hit stuff like this, where you just go mad with power and you don't care, right? Yeah, you can just hit things like this that don't worry, that don't matter, and you just become so strong. And this thing actually represents a huge value. Look at this, three rounds of chased, unbelievable value. I'm not getting cut on important turns. I have the Devourer of Death chilling in the wings as needed. She's actually doing excellent work. Truly, uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with her at this point. I'll hold on to Pack Morsels here. We're still just totally fine. We do a million damage. Yeah, finally a cut on top. I was expecting at least one of those. You're staying if she lives, she actually takes the next round too. Which is awesome. Blast something on bottom, whatever. I need to give her some stealth, right? Here, you can have... You can have... Devourer of Death, yeah. I had to think about it, because the quick means he's swinging into this light wings long before this tomb dies, so... All right, after this, I will be putting it all into our friend, the top floor guy. We're very strong. We demolish Seraph here. We have no questions whatsoever. Yeah, good job. Silophyte, huge value on this, on this combat. She trivialized this combat to an extreme degree. Like, wow, she did a great job. Huh, yeah, fair enough, man. Cool. The nice thing about this kind of a run at this stage, I feel like we actually navigated it, and I no longer have to really think because my alloy construct is doing 1,600 damage a turn, which, as it turns out, is pretty strong. So, fun. We'll feed her down here. Good job. Oh, no, one of the actually just die. What is in here? An Antumbra morsel? Hell yeah, we live. We did it. Go team. Hell yeah, civil fight? Get in the fray. Or molten encasement, I believe. <laughs> Why not? He kills something, right? She does something? Yeah, she does 100 damage. Well played, huh? I think I can press end turn. Yeah, I probably have this in the bag at this point. It's very hard for me to just press end turn, though. My brain doesn't let me, because I want to make sure every card is played correctly. We just got nine spell weakness? Hold up. Look how much damage this Antumbra Assault does. It does 23. That was a 230 damage Antumbra Assault. Wow. Also, we demolished Seraph, of course. Who was surprised? That Icy Silophyte was crazy value. Show me blank pages. Oh, snap. Is it time? Are we doing it? 
Oh my god! We finally see blank pages! Let's give them hell. This is gonna get in the way so hard. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Dude, someone was giving me crap the other day for this. We're gonna take a moment and look. Logbook. Someone was giving me crap because I had not seen my 125th artifact blank pages on this account yet. I have been seeing it on my other account. I have two. But finally, we see it on this run. This cursed seed has done it for us. Also, we win. Go team. Guard of the unnamed? Hell yeah, man. Seems good to me. Get some of that rage in there. Good job. I don't want him on the floor at this point. Well, actually, he doesn't do anything in this combat, so fine. Whatever. Show me a furnace tap. Good job. Go team. We've done it. I get some extra multi-strikes here. Ooh, that's good. Also, high harvest rector? Question mark? a weird one that's chain of gems value by the way all right harvest rector in the in action <laughs> uh okay oh this is really good putting this molten encasement up here isn't it yeah because it dies and it gives stealth to primordium and to the construct cool here you go here, have some harvesting. Sure, bud. I haven't played with blank pages in so long. Who do I get next turn? Let's find out today. Verdict is... Echo right? Shellsmith? I could give armor to my floor? What the hell? Um, okay. Weird. Get him Echo right, I guess. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well played. I know I should maybe have fed my man a little bit, but uh, okay. How much damage are they doing? They do not enough because we kill everything here. Yeah, it doesn't matter where I put it. It's the last turn of buffet, sadly. It's okay. That is plenty of multi-strike for this combat, huh? 126 by whatever. I do want Devourer up top here. Or honestly, Devourer middle is really strong. Just kills everything. I don't need the stealth. We're going to send the Crushing Demise here and kill a Harvester. Excellent news. I will take a damage shield here. What the hell is this floor? What is happening? Blank pages, what are you doing? <laughs> I guess I'll play the Morsels up top. They'll just die, but it's fine. No big deal. Good that we got some lifesteal there, I think. Okay, what what wonderful champion do I get now? Windleton. What is Windleton doing here? What if I just start killing my own... Ooh, this is good. Molded on a morsel is great here. I'll take the lifesteal one here. I want to make sure I chain a gems to keep myself fed, which is really important here. Okay. 50-50? Not today. It's fine. I want to keep the stealth flowing here. You let mid get run over. I do not play Strangler. Oh my god. It is bad. Is this good to let this man die? I don't really care. My man is doing a lot of damage. Let's not underestimate the Harvest Wave and start throwing random crap at it. Yeah, let, let's not underestimate the Harvest Wave. What do we get today? <laughs> yeah, Wrathful Prince. All right, good, good job. I'm, I'm a believer in Wrathful Prince. Perils, we're way overflowing on damage. I think we pre-relentless kill here, almost certainly. Hey, Morsel Miner, get in there, bud. I'll take the Stealth Tomb here for Devourer of Death. It's solid. Sure. Harvester... Harvest Rector, why not? Hornbreaker Prince, I believe. <laughs> no, he's just dead. Alright, good job. Well played, bud. 
What a good combat. Blank pages? I don't need it. I was very strong without it. Show me another Primordium, you cowards. Hey, Rector, how about having another Rector? <laughs> oh, man. By the way, because of the... Oh, this is good, right? Check this. All right, hey. Let's blow a man up. Rector, go punch him. Please don't do anything. I need to make sure I don't screw up, huh? Fair. Take an Ember Drain for no reason. Oh, no. It's fine. Here, feed my man. There you go, bud. There you go. Why not? Devour of Death in action. Cool. We're doing a thousand extra damage overflow here, which is pretty solid for where I'm at. I do need to make sure I have enough fuel, but I think we're fine. I think we're getting there. Don't let this run end yet. Show me a Morsel card. Ah, shame. Although, technically, Primitive Mold maybe is a Morsel card. Hey, well played. Do not play Windleton. He's bad. How much damage is coming in? 90? Play Windleton. He dies. Well played, friends. Oh no, we finally lose Echo, right? <laughs> it's fine. Everything here is fine. Sure, man. I think it's one more round or maybe two more rounds here. Alright, show me a Primordium variant. <laughs> All right, Tethys. Fair. I suppose I should have expected that. Tethys, okay. I believe... Here, we're gonna mold it here... for a morsel. I could reform any of my Myriad champions. I'll take the Lifesteal, because I think he has swung into, I don't know, nothing, I guess. Yeah, there's no way I can really get this, so I will just put the damage shield on that, and then... here and feed Harvest Rector. You know what? Harvest Rector can protect Tethys. I'm a believer. Yeah. Harvest Rector's got it. <laughs> this, this is one of my favorite things about Blank Pages runs, because you get stuff that looks like this. A another Tethys? Oh, we win. Good job, go team. Look at this floor. That's a floor, huh? That's a pretty darn good floor. Who do I get back? Hornbreaker Prince. Sure, he kills a man. Excellent job. Go team. We have... We've done it. Alright, we win. Look at we have two Rectors. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, blank pages. You're so much fun. Thank you for existing. Cool. Let's get me out of here. <laughs> what a good run. Okay, so I'm really pleased with this, not only because we finally see blank pages, but because we actually navigated a run that was, I think, tricky. There were some really bad parts to this run, and then it kind of spiraled out of control later. And I think this run looks pretty doomed if you don't see that alloy construct on Ring 2. What the hell would you run? I mean, with the superfood line, you reasonably could have put that stat, those stats into anything. It could have been... You could have put it into your your stupid conscription notice unit, right? So, let's look at the challenge first, as usual. What a, high, what a big score. Love that. Okay, let's see what our friends are doing here. Okay, this fellow... Yeah, Endless Molten Encasement duped it. Interesting choice. You went in on... Yeah, okay, this is Superfood Aggressive 1. Ah, you got a Paraffin Thug, huh? It's a pretty doomed unit, huh? It's pretty doomed. Yeah, you don't. if you don't have the Perils of Production on Holdover, man, this run looks really crazy. Three Crushing Demises. Interesting. Grovel? Yeah, you don't really have a lot of direction here. I mean, you may have you maybe had a lot of money, but you weren't able to do anything with it. So it's really interesting because in this case, when you're if you don't see that alloy construct, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm imagining this. You don't see the alloy construct, you don't see holdover perils. What happens from there? 
I mean, Hell's Banners is a really good pick in that case, right? Because you can actually just straight up play the Furnace Taps and then you get all your Ember from minus one Space Prisms or Grovels. So obviously I think this person looked for this weird large stone. That's kind of a not a good, it's not a good pick there. Maybe you took that on ring two to not die on Daedalus or something. Interesting. I don't know about this choice. It is good having some stats on him, right, for the Primordium, but it, in the world where you miss all the things that I found, that I looked for, because of the reasons I looked for them, then you have the problem of, how do I survive this run? And the answer is, yeah, Crushing Demise is pretty good, but I think you need to get minus ones in the cards to get them free, and then you use Morsels with Hell's Banners to get you to where you need to go. Also, I don't think Bone Rattler was doing you any favors here. Bone Shine or nothing in that shop, I'm in that event, I'm pretty sure. Prism Retrieval, nah. Space Prism is fine. What did you skip for this? What did I take? I don't remember. I'll have to look. Cannibalize is interesting. I mean, more morsels is good. I do think there is the world where you're reforming Primordium a bunch, but when you as soon as you go into superfood, you can't do that very quickly right you can't do the the ideal line where you just kill them every turn and then have them feed and burn out feed and burn out so so yeah i can see why this fell apart there might have been a way to pilot this to at least get past arcus which is where i think things really picked up from there in my opinion all right let's see what some of our other friends did these ones all died much earlier i'll briefly talk through them i guess i can click the little arrows over here to be quicker what in the world that is a plus 10 endless lady of the house. Where was this lady of the house? Must have been on ring two, right? All right? Lady of the house is a great unit here. This is actually an excellent unit for superfood primordium in this run, right? So you just reform primordium a million times with superfood. You extend ladies burnout here. You don't even need this endless, right? interesting i think you just took too many units and upgraded them like what is this morsel mass maker doing for you what is this morsel master doing for you the answer is nothing and then yeah you died really early so you haven't like cleaned up your deck i'm gonna tell you plus 30 plink times two maybe skip that one you were at 55 shards on ring four you took the multi-strike yeah i think you need to look dial it back a little bit you were a little aggro for how strong you were and the answer was you're not actually very strong at all so you're not terrible but you could you could definitely be in better shape from this state conscription notice is a definitely good hit though i think that was the right choice let's see what else we have okay this person again died on ring four that multi-strike wave that multi-strike combat you have the holdover grovel interesting Oh, that must be, that's so unfortunate. So you went right on ring two, for sure, if you saw this holdover. And you, or maybe you saw it on the ring four magic shop, hard to say. But you don't have the perils of production, so that's, that's tragic. Your only banner unit is Morsel Maker infused with Morsel Master. It's a pretty tough run. I don't think that gets there. I'm just gonna say. So... Yeah, uh, this is tough because of the units you're shown. I think you reasonably could have done this line with a lot of different units just because Primordium does so much work. We're not going to go too far on these, I don't think. Yeah, let's look at mine. Okay, so first things first. I think Conscription Notice is great. And Melting Spout was also good. I didn't have to buy a Burnout 1 in my tombs. This run definitely picks up really fast. The fact that I took a lot of the things I did enabled me to be as aggro as I was, and it let me go to 150 shards and at long last see the fabled blank pages, which is truly excellent. It is the last thing I had to unlock in my main account logbook. I had to see blank pages. And the thing is, is I don't normally go to 150 shards very often because it doesn't make sense. If my general opinion is you should only take shards when they give you a lot of power. And this is a run where that happened. I was at 100 on ring 7 and I was saying to myself, hey, you know, I can actually really use all the things that they're showing me here. I'm going to be duping a card that has shards in it. I'm going to be going higher anyway. So let's get value and see what we see. So really hype. 
Conscription notice is unbelievable in the early game, and that icy Zilla fight hit on Seraph was so good. It cleaned up that combat so well. I don't think we would have lost even if I had lost out on that, but she killed. So she killed entire waves of multiple light wings that might have actually given me trouble if I hadn't drawn my devourer on time, which I, I drew him one turn late. I would have probably sacked a bunch of pyre health there, actually. Maybe something on the order of 30, just because of those last two light wings. I didn't have enough hits at the time. So kind of interesting. I don't actually remember how many hits it was when I got there. I think I only was doing five, maybe. And there were six on the floor. So. Or there, yeah, there would have been six, but it was five walking up and then Seraph would have dropped the six there. Yeah, so it would have been six and we probably would have leaked 15. So, okay, I think it would have been fine, but still. the Skipping the first endless on Molten Encasement is an interesting decision that I think is completely correct because I, I didn't really think I needed to and I had a really good chance of hitting either Multi-Strike or Quick and... The quick that I ended up putting in this alloyed construct allowed me to take the ring five and ring four artifact trials, which showed me, where are they? Fade's first blade and waxer snuffer. The winged steel was from the horde on ring five. So waxer snuffer hit was nuts. The, the fade first blade did nothing in this run. I took it because the perspective value of this was worth more to me than 25 gold, basically basically in the world where maybe I go for intense burnout on Alloy Construct, it it adds up. It will apply rage that matters, especially to counteract someone like Chaste, so it's fine. Whereas Wax or Snuffer, oh boy, Molten Encasement suddenly became an exceptional survivability plan in a Relentless, no questions asked, and then also they showed me another Devourer of Death, which I just had to take at that point, because that clears entire waves, very clear, very clean, so really good. The extra encasement was solid in the bat draw. Alloyed Construct, as always, is one of the only Umbra lines that I think is vaguely consistent. Uh, it hits enough times. You don't have to hit Trample Stone. You don't have to hit Shroud Spike. It is functional. And I wish there were more Umbra lines that were functional, is the way I'll put that. There are not many. Most of them are rare units or Alloyed Construct, and that's basically it. Otherwise, we just cut our deck down to bare bones, and we made sure our density on perils and furnace taps were good, and we were strong. We had two grovels I could play at any time in order to get the fuel that I needed. Everything else got removed, pretty much. I only had two of my starters left at the end there. There are no plinks, no trained stewards, and only two primitive molts in this deck, and I also cut other things. This deck is good. If you get to this stage in a run, you feel powerful. You are very powerful. And you can even see, I mean, we pre-relentless the Divinity, we demolished Seraph. Yeah, just very overwhelmingly strong. Did I take any damage on this run at all? Wow, this is actually a perfect run at 150 shards. Yeah, totally. It's perfect. Well played. Awesome. And we saw blank pages. Truly great. I don't want to say it's blessed, because I actually understand why this was so difficult for so many people. You see all those Umber units, what do you do? You maybe don't take the perils of production, right? You maybe skip this, not realizing you maybe need to think about it. And then you see the holdover, you go, oh crap, how am I scaling? How am I doing anything? Maybe you don't see the alloy construct. You don't go right on ring two. I still think that Lady of the House line could get there, right? with Reform Primordium, but Reform Primordium is a really dangerous, I don't want to say dangerous, that's the wrong word. It is a high skill floor line. You need to know how to play it to make sure you're getting the value. You need to make sure Primordium dies. You, you need to think about it. It's tricky. I think Primordium in that respect is difficult to play. And my navigation of these early combats through, I think, Ring 3. So my entire early game was Reform Primordium, and then after that I pivoted to Superfood, and we kind of went from there. But, but yeah, this is a really interesting one, and I actually super appreciate why it was submitted to me as a curse seed, because there's lots of ways you see this run, and it doesn't get as powerful as I did. And truly, I think 
Ring 5 is when this snowballed. The ability to take that Ring 5 trial comfortably and win without any concern or damage taken, that is where we spiral, because the Waxer Snuffer, the Devourer of Death, the Molten Encasement line showed back up, really, really picked up from that point. And yeah, I could tunnel removals and feel okay about it. So a really good run, a really solid run that I'm glad to have played and that I think should be really informative for people stuck in a rut on this clan combo or who have truly doomed banners like that, which can happen, by the way. I saw eight... Oh my gosh, I saw one melting unit out of three unit drafts. Eight out of nine were Umber trash cards that I would never normally want to take. Real rough. So anyway, I think that's enough. We've talked about this and yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling glad we're back on the 2-0, and o, picking it up, getting some steam. And yeah, so hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike. If you want, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.